<laughs> LOL. Stick, LOL. Stop. Stop. Oh, which reminds me, uh, BTW. Um, Seriously. We have a Seriously. Ever since you started texting a lot, you've been using all those stupid abbreviations. Sorry. Just give it a rest. Um, can I have a POS? <laughs> what? PO, uh, piece of slushy. <laughs> what you just watched there was the beginning of a video uploaded to YouTube on August 14th, 2007. What separates it apart from countless videos like it is who uploaded it to the site. On the left is Tyler Joseph, aged 18, who two years later would form the band 21 Pilots and eight years later take home his first Grammy. And this is how it happened. Tyler Joseph was born on December 1st, 1989 in Columbus, Ohio. His parents were both teachers who then went on to become school basketball coaches. Because of this, Tyler was more interested in basketball from a young age and carried this on into his school where he became a point guard. In fact, it was while playing basketball he would meet Nick Thomas, the future bassist of the yet to be formed band. The pair even performed the national anthem together at one of their games. It was now that Tyler was starting to make decisions that would lead him to becoming a musician, as it was only after seeing a songwriter perform at a high street club that he chose to reject an opportunity to play basketball at Otterbein University, including the scholarship that came along with it. Yeah, my, uh, my, my parents didn't, didn't really see me being an international pop star now, um, but to be able to go to college the best way of doing that is getting some sort of scholarship, which, of course, it wasn't going to come from academics. Um, so what about athletics? So a lot of the plan was to get a scholarship playing basketball, and that was, that was actually the case. And uh, I decided to play the piano instead. <laughs> he started playing with an old keyboard that he had in his closet and began trying to recreate simple melodies that he had heard on the radio. It was during this time, from around 2007 to 2008, he started recording a solo album titled No Fun Intended in the basement of his house. No Fun Intended is a really interesting album for multiple reasons. The first is the fact that it was never formally released. The only people that we know that ever got their hands on the album were close friends and family of Tyler and those who attended some very early performances of 21 Pilots. Due to this, we don't have a full track list of the album. In fact, one of the songs that the community named Going Down was only discovered in 2018, a full decade after the album was made. Have you ever heard the outside calling? Have you ever heard the trees singing their song? Have you ever tasted the ray of sun? And have you ever held the moon's glow? Thematically, the album is also a bit strange, featuring harrowing depictions of depression and suicide on songs like Taken by Sleep and Trees. However, not every song on the album shares this theme. For example, there's Trap 14, which is Taco Bell Saga. Yeah, man, I really like Taco Bell. I like how I can watch you make my food. Drop it on the floor, I think it's rude. Man, I really like Taco Bell. With the inclusion of Taco Bell Saga, I have to wonder whether or not this is a real album at all, or is it just a proof of concept that Tyler did to see if he could make an album? I guess it doesn't really matter, as some fans of 21 Pilots currently treat No Fun Intended as a 21 Pilots album anyway, and maybe rightfully so, as a few songs on the album were later re-released or part reused in official 21 Pilot releases. Now, this brings us to what you're probably here for and that's the founding of the band itself. The band was founded in 2009 and consisted of Tyler Joseph as the frontman, bassist Nick Thomas, who played basketball with Tyler, and finally the drummer, Chris Sarley. From what we know, it was actually Chris who was one of the main reasons why the band started. After meeting Tyler at a house party, Chris asked Tyler if he was interested in starting a band. Impressed by the recording studio he had built in his house, Tyler agreed, and thus the band was born. It was during this time that many elements that the band would be known for would be tested. 
like the use of costumes and acrobatics, all originally started as a way of grabbing the attention of unfamiliar or disinterested attendees and promoters. Also at this stage, the band decided that they were going to be called 21 Pilots. The name is actually a reference to the play All My Sons by Arthur Miller. In the play, the main character has to decide whether or not he should send out faulty aeroplane parts during the war so he can feed his family. In the end, he decides to send out the parts knowing that they are faulty. This then leads to the death of 21 Pilots. Now that this band had a name, it was time that they recorded their first album which they also called 21 Pilots. However, from now on, I will be referring to it as Self-Titled. Self-Titled was independently released by the band on December 29th, 2009. They began touring the local area shortly after. Marketing for the album and tour was very grassroots and basically consisted of Tyler's mother standing outside of Ohio State University giving away tickets to the shows. In my opinion, Self-Titled is a pretty strong debut album. Sure, it's a bit rough around the edges, but it still managed to take all the best bits from the No Fun Intended solo project and give life to it. This is clearly seen on tracks like Fall Away. I don't wanna fall, fall away. I don't wanna fall, fall away. I'll keep the lights on in this place. We also have here much more cheerful songs, like in the song The Pantaloon. You're when you were nine they said he had lost his mind despite the cheerful melody the lyrics clearly paint a much more darker image and unlike the songs on no fun intended here all the tracks work together in a cohesive way creating as i said a much stronger album as a whole in 2010 the band released two new songs one being a cover of jar of hearts you know i can't take one more step the band also released a remix of Time to Say Goodbye. It's also rumoured that this song should have been on the self-titled album, but was cut from the final release due to copyright issues. It also happens to be the first song that future drummer Josh Dunn had listened to from the band. But before Josh could join the band, the others had to leave, and this happened on May 8th, 2011, when Chris left the band to focus on work. Thomas joined him a month later on June 3rd to focus on his schooling. It was now when Chris invited his co-worker Josh Dunn to fill in this place. Despite at this point leaving the band, both Nick and Chris still remained involved with the band's production for some time after their departure. After he finished with his schooling, Nick came back to the band, this time taking on the role of merchandise distribution throughout the production of Blurry Face, and continues to stay actively involved in the band's tour cycles to this day. Now that the band had reshuffled, it was time to record a new album. 21 Pilots self-released their second album, Regional at Best, on July 8th, 2011. While Chris and Nick were involved with the conceptualisation of the album, neither they nor Josh claimed to have much involvement with its production, which was handled nearly exclusively by Tyler. It truly was an album to bridge the change between the two different forms of the band. The album does, however, include two featured artists, who are Tyler's brother, Zach, on the track from Tyler's college acquaintance, on the track Be Concerned. Now, Region at Best is a very strange album, because just like the other songs I've talked about, it seemingly doesn't exist. Despite being a full album release coming after the band's debut, it isn't available on Apple Music or Spotify. However, unlike other pieces of missing music from the band, we have our fair share of confirmation that this one exists, and some copies of the album that are available can go for a lot of money online. I'm going to show you a clip of the band talking about the semi-lost album. Listen carefully to what they say. And afterwards, I'll tell you why I think the band aren't the reason why the album isn't on streaming services. Is there a chance that we'll ever see the return of Regional at Best? <clears throat> regional at Best is kind of this like uh, mixtape 
slash thing Josh and I created and it never really truly existed in its full form you know it, it was the beginning stages of, of a lot of stuff for us and uh, I don't know if we'll ever get around to releasing it officially um, but it is a work of art that is important to our growth and, and uh, kind of a milestone for us and so um, I don't even know if you have it. I like I have some songs on my computer, of, like old yeah. demos. But man, it throws it back. You see, the reason why I don't think the album is available anymore is because of a big change that happened for the band in between the release of this album and their next one, Vessel. In April 2012, the band announced that they had been signed. There is a label by the name of Fueled by Ramen. Uh, some of you have heard it, some of you may not have. But can I tell you that when we talked about how important our fan base was in Ohio and building it the way that we saw was the best way to build it, they have been doing this for years. And they said, we want to partner with you in what it is you're doing. And they're all here right now, up there. The Tory Home Pilots is because it's not just someone on a CD. It's not just someone you play in your car. This is Tory Home Pilots. <laughs> so can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Because we were so encouraged by how for us and for you guys they were, because you guys were too darn loud. I've been I've been dreaming about this moment. Because you guys were too darn loud. Themselves, just doing everything they can to get people in this room and then the people in this room becoming the band because we break down stylistic walls we want to break down what it is you think a concert is this is not a wall here we are a part of you and what happened was you got signed to Fuel by Ryan I think the sign of the band is the main reason why the album isn't available today. If you look at the ownership of the albums, all the albums from after the signing are owned by the record company, whereas the self-titled album is owned by the band itself. I think this was done so the revenue could be split by the original band members who were no longer part of the band. Because the region at the best is a bit of a midway point between the two albums, I think the record company didn't know what to do, so asked for the album to be pulled and some of the best songs be re-released, which they were in their next album, Vessel. However, this is just my theory. But what happens after this point, and how does fame change the band? How did the band deal with the added pressure to being owned by a record company, as well as who exactly Josh Dunn is, and how his addition to the band changes it? As this video is getting long enough, all this and more will be discussed in the next part, as well as discussion of their next two albums, which are by far their most popular.